Okay, moving along with those locks that CorrectGene sent. Um, if you go back a few videos, uh, you can see where I received that. Um, trying to think of which lock I picked on that video. I can't think of it right now. Um, I think it was the show, show X key though. Um, so for this one, uh, West 917, it is a lock that has 20 pins in it. It's got um, seven along the top uh, with just, it's got a mix of um, spools and uh, standard pins in here. And the key pins, a number, like when you have a standard pin here, you, the key pins have a taper with like a spool to them. So they feel like um, they give you the counter rotation of, as if it's one of the driver spools, try to mix you all up. Uh, the left and right, they have counter milling in them. Um, they also have that same deal with the drivers and the the spools, the standard drivers with the spooled key pins or the spools uh, on the drivers. And there are, um, I'm trying to think, there are seven down the left and six down the right, I think. So seven, seven, six for a total of 20. Anyways, to get into this, uh, I got my normal tensioner that you might be used to. It's got this, uh, it's two Z bars sandwiched together in a 3D printed body. And then it's got another little wipe rinser just to give it some more elevation. Um, the reason for that is so that uh, I'm going to be using these multi-pick picks and so that they can reach up to the pins okay. I need a decent amount of elevation. So I got a multi-pick number one and a number six and number nine. Um, there are these curved flags left and right. So if it's curved like this, I'll pick the ones on the right with the back of the flag and it kind of avoids the ones on the left because of the curve and then vice versa with the the left side. For the top, I'm going to use um, these thick boys. Uh, I got a hook number one from Peterson, 25 thousandths, and this um, steep hook SS dev from Sparrows. And uh, all right, let's let's get to picking anyways. This one could take quite a while. Hopefully not. So I'm going to start on the right side. And standard fare, feel the, the feel the pin. If it's bound solid, pick it. If it's springy, even the slightest bit, you know, don't push on it. So one is springy, two springy, three springy, four is barely springy, five is hard to get on, but is binding. No, I slipped off of it. Click from five, another click. So what often happens is that either um, one, that was a standard basically, and another standard nearby is like a barely lift. Like it's almost like a zero lift, but you barely got to touch it to set it. And either one or two of those uh, ended up getting set. I'm trying to pull the, the pick out, but I get, I get stuck here. So that means that something up here is probably binding and not letting my pick pass. Whereas before it wasn't binding, which let my pick, my pick get through. All right, so pin three. Uh, you probably hear it better than me, but I, I think I feel the slightest bit of spring there. Two and one. I think one right here is the binder right up front. Hmm. There, I got a click. Um, so that gave me some counter rotation and then set. Check the rest. Two's already further far down. And three is a little springy. Okay, so I think that's the right side set. I only know from having picked this once, uh, twice before actually now. Um, first time took me a long time. Second time I got it in four minutes. So now that's on the camera, it's probably gonna take like 20. Um, so going along the top, can't see very well. I should kind of switch to, from my glasses to the magnifiers just so I can see I'm going straight down the keyway. Usually I don't use too much vision, but on these high pin counts, I want to make sure I'm going down straight down the keyway. Um, all right, so pin one, no, two. Getting a little counter rotation, click. Uh, one's now counter rotating. Or it was. Hold on. I'll leave one alone, I'll come back to that. Three, no. Four counter and a click. Five, a little bit hard to get on, but click. 
come back to one again. It is countering again. And a click. It was just really hard to lift that one high enough. And I know I get stuck here. I can't get back. And um, I would go in and try to grab six and seven with this, but I'm getting stuck. So what I'm going to do is see if there's anything on the left side I can just push out of the way so I can get that pick back. One is very loose. Two is loose. Three is loose. Four is slightly springy. Five is way down loose. And six is binding. So I'm going to push six. All right, got a click, got some plug rotation. That was just a standard. And nothing on seven. I just wanted to get some things out of the way. So I'm going to come back again. Now I use the deep hook to get the ones in back because the hook one has a hard time navigating. And now um, I know that six is uh, just a standard that's already been set. Um, like it's like a no lift or something. So I'm just going to go after seven. I'm just using some of the knowledge I have from having previously picked it. Um, learning what pin does what takes quite a bit of time. So obviously that's not all going to be on the video. I'm going to use some of my prior knowledge to pick this. But pin 7 is really difficult. It's quite a bit in there. And it's hard to stay on and pick. So this could take me the bulk of the pick time just getting this one pin. Like it's right there, I think. All right, I think I might have gotten it. So if that, if I did get it, now I'll go down the left side. One, two, three, four. Oh, a little click from four. I don't know if I was expecting that, but we'll go with it. All right, six gave uh, gave out again, and I got a lot of plug rotation. Like I'm I'm in a pretty deep false set here, so. I'll feel my way. Six, five, no, seven, six, five. I'm feeling counter rotation on five. Set five. But four. A little stuck getting past four. A little stuck getting past three. Actually, really stuck. I'll start from the beginning. Pin one. A little click there. Pin two, pin three, okay, count, counter rotation from three, click there and we're open. So this is the third time I'm picking it open. I must say every single time I've gotten a little bit different order picking out of it on that left side. But um, as long as you're not picking the ones that are jiggly, um, you should be okay. Just pick the ones that you find that are relatively solid. So let's take a look inside of this. Um, let's switch that up. All right, the focus is in a weird spot. Let's move it down to there. Okay, so for this, um, let's lock that back up again. There we go. And it still works. There are two screws here that take the core or the cylinder, what do you want to call it, out of the body, out of the housing. There's that, we'll just get rid of that. And that, we'll just get rid of that. Two screws. And now we're down to this. So I could have put this in and, and picked it, but whatever. Um, there are two ways to gut it. One, you could remove these two back screws. And then um, I printed these followers for it. Um, and that's how I gutted it. Uh, but then once I had it gutted, I was like, uh, let's go ahead and deal with these um, these covers. So they're just crimped in this one spot here, a little crimp. So I just cut that crimp off, like kind of f made it smooth on the left and right. And the top was just a little punch there. So all I did is I stick a screwdriver underneath from from like uh, from like here and lifted it up a little bit. And then I, uh, once I got it out, I hammered it flat again. So there, the only thing that's really holding these in here is the the spring tension on each of those. If I take everything out, these kind of just slide in and out. You could rough up the bottom side so the springs hold hold a little bit better, but I, I don't seem to have much problem. Uh, you know, like against a little bit of banging, and they don't seem to come loose. So I'm putting on this tray, this will denote the difference between the left and the right. Conveniently, there are 13, so you got seven 
from the left, six from the right, and then we'll put six across the top there. Um, so, I don't know, start on the left side here. I'll get the hook number one, and there's a little dent here, and I'll push on that. But don't just push on it blindly. You want to make sure that you don't let the springs go flying, right? So let's do that. And there's the first one. Um, I'm trying to, I'm going to dump like that, and then I'll move on uh, to number two. Uh, I might want to do a little bit more clean than this. I'll dump them down here and then sort them out. Let me move a little bit more into the camera frame like that. And it might take a little longer if I sort as I go, but in the end, it might be a better better deal. Okay, so there's number three. And we'll take a look at these pins. Um, the spools and then the key pins have like, like I said, they have like the sharp lip I didn't say that. I said they, they're like they're acting like spools, but they have sharp lips on top of some of them. Easy oversets. You gotta be careful about. And they have counter milling on the um, left and right sides, which makes uh, makes you have to push a little hard at the end to, of the counter rotation to set them, which can also uh, endanger you from getting. Uh, lure you into getting an overset. How about that? Words are difficult. Uh, I just lost a spring, went flying to the right. I will see if I can find that, but first I will finish gutting. Uh, take a quick look. No, I saw it fly off to the right, so I'll find that. Um, all right, left side, I'll put that there, I guess. Top. Um, what I'll do the top I'll just slide this panel all the way off and then I'll use tweezers I think I did not bring up pliers to pull that but looks like I got that there is one really strong spring that just flew out and that is for a ball bearing to kind of center bias the plug inside there um, actually the top has I'll put this over here because the top has seven pins so these okay they're all the same they could dump the springs but I like that I've maintained the, the sort order that they were originally in here in except now I just dropped one there's that keep that nice all right ball bearing and the first uh, well the last driver come on Ball bearing there, last driver goes actually there. Let's see if I can get that. Okay, everything's getting mixed up. This is really bad because there's a big gap between the top and bottom here. So I'm getting a lot of mix up. Um, I do have a photo, so I'll be able to get these drivers back in the right order. But um, they're getting a bit jumbled in. They are. A mix of spools and standards. I think this is the right order though, but I will check it against the photo and make sure. This is all much cleaner because usually I go I go chamber by chamber instead of doing them all. I'm just trying to rush it for you guys. And ugh, I don't know. I need to get my photo, but I think this was up top. Go ahead and cover and try to dump one at a time now. This is what I should have done. Don't rush it. Don't feel peer pressure to rush it like I am because it just causes a mess. At least the key pins should be in the right order, which you can. Oh, I'm all the way up, aren't I? Um, with the key pins, not a big deal because you can use the key to find out their order again. But with the drivers, uh, it's not as easy. But I do know that the standard drivers um, are usually paired with one of those nasty key pins that have the sharp lip up top that is like a spool. Okay, let's take a look at, I'm gonna take a look before I get rid of the last 
Um, I know that here I have a uh, up top I have a standard driver on three and then this must be backwards here because this has got a little sharp lip up top so I know that goes with a standard driver and this one's got a sharp lip so it goes a standard driver whereas the rest are just standard um, key pins so I know they go with the spool drivers all right so now having learned uh, that that was a mess we'll do the last one right one chamber at a time all right that first one is an uh, anti-drill pin so I'll just dump that out there uh, now the first um, key chain uh, the first pin chamber has a spring wants to join this guy here and let's move this back up again now they're doing it the right way that and a spool driver second one spring spool driver third one Bring spool driver, standard key pin, fourth one, has a standard driver, that means this one will probably have one of those spooled looking key pins, it does. Next one, almost got two there, spring standard driver. Grab the spring from this last one that was wanting to pop out. And I'll close them back up so I can grab the key pin. The one previous. There we go. One more chamber. Sorry, it takes forever to get these high pin counts. All right, so there's the last chamber. I have to find that one missing spring. We'll pull the plug out so we can take a look at that. That's that right side. We'll plug out in a second. That's the top side, and there's the left side. Um, get the plug. Two more screws here. Only lightly screwed in. Big old tail piece on here. And the plug. So the plug, like I said, has um, counter milling here on the right chambers. Not to be confused with that little ledge further down there, that's to stop the key pins from falling in, that's why these all have like a ledge to them. Um, same thing on the left side, it's got that counter milling, but the top does not have it. You see, nothing on the top. That is the, it had a um, anti-drill right there, and it's got this pin here in the back I don't know what that's for. Uh, looks like it stops you from... Okay, that might be like a anti-bypass piece. W with that in place, I can't get to the back of the... I can't get to the back of the lock. If that wasn't there, I could go all the way to the back of the lock and maybe mess around. So that might be what that is for. Key pins, uh, or all the pins. There we go. We'll take a close-up look at... Most of the pins are like this. They're this, um, I don't know if you can see that sharp uh, lip at the bottom. They're the, a, a spool. Maybe that way around you can see it. See that sharp lip there? And then they're tapered down to it. Um, so that's the spools. They have a hollow top so they can fit in shorter Bibles and fit the spring. Um, then you have just your standard drivers. Come on. Oh my goodness. All right. Standard drivers, again, hollow on the top. I'm just losing everything. Uh, for keep, so those are the driver pins. Then for key pins, your standard, geez, your standard key pins are like this. They, they do have that step, but that's just so that they can rest on the ledge and not fall into the uh, keyway. They do have a little bit of uh, a taper on the top there as well to um, give you a little counter rotation if you push on them just to encourage making stuff drop and Then you have these that are usually paired up with standard drivers and they have a, a, sh a sharp lip up top there right and then the really 
uh, there's really one more. Instead of a sharp lip up top, it has a kind of a taper to give you counter rotation and then drop you into this area. And then taper again to give you more counter rotation. Um, so a lot of nasty stuff in here. Uh, only a few locks left from CJ. We'll see if we can hit them or not. I don't know. I've been picking kind of a lot lately. So that is the West 917. And I have to go find that spring. Thanks. Bye.